All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Card Talk. I'm Ryan, joined with Lou and Tyler here for another episode. I'm going to get right into it, into it today. We're going to start with uh, a topic we've been discussing a lot the last couple days, and that is going to be the Jordan SGC rookie sale. Uh, Lou, I think you've got a little bit more info on this than I do, but it sounds like it was north of $400,000 for a gold label SGC 10 Jordan. Yeah. Sound right? Yeah. It finished at 420 K. Uh, like you said, SGC pristine, SGC 10 pristine, one of one in that way. Um, as the story goes, they, uh, heritage actually got the card raw and they decided to send it into SGC to get graded. Um, and it came back a pristine. So, uh, they put it up and, it went crazy. You know, I, the way I heard it works is in the last 30 minutes, if you're in the top five, you're allowed to like bid more to my understanding. Like that's how they narrow it down. And it jumped up like crazy up to 420. And that's where it ended. Interesting. Interesting. So I know we had a discussion about this personally. We are not grading experts, but looking at this card, I think the interesting take here in tie, do you have it? Do you have it pulled up? The uh, the actual image, Let yeah. Or Lou, do you have it? Uh, I also have Tyler right now. Keep I want to I want to pull this up because I we talked about it, but it has got an SGC gold label, and for them that's like a you know a perfect ten. You can't get any higher type deal. And if I think it would be safe to say that if we compared this card to uh, higher grades from other companies such as BGS or or PSA, that this likely would not compare to those cards. Um, yep. So I, I kind of want to position this conversation in, the, in a way that, not to bash SGC, but more of a, when you're buying graded cards, buy the card, not the grade. Because Especially I think this, older stuff. Because I think this is important, right? That like, these are people grading these cards. These are humans. They make errors, right? So much goes into it. I know we've talked about this before. What happens if the grader has had a really, really bad day, had a bad week, a lot going on with life? You're maybe not as focused on grading. What happens if life's really good? You just got a bonus. You just got promoted. You know, we may go Oprah and you get a 10, you get a 10, you get a 10, right? Everybody's getting 10s on cards that might not be that good. Uh, so I think this just kind of uh, speaks to that, but I wanted to kind of get your opinion. And Tyler, you look like you're you're puzzling some things over there. So, what's uh what's on your mind? Yeah, what was going through my mind just as we think about it there is was one, uh, again, the how uh, the max amount of like PSA or SGC a one out of ten scale graded by humans inevitably, no matter what, if you take a step back and think about it, is going to have its discrepancies. You can't tell me that every PSA 10 is equal to PSA 10. And what I want to do with this conversation a little bit is go from $420,000 card to say $90 card or a hundred dollar card. Uh, maybe call it a, a shy a rookie prism PSA nine and the literally discrepancies that you can find both in terms of the centering or edges or corners in that. And what we've discussed now a lot about and what we can continue to push is like, be thoughtful. If you're going to buy something and again, this is unregulated and um, eBay is, is set up in a way where you're buying from a seller. Whereas if you go into Foot Locker and you buy a pair of Jordan ones and you get home and there's a hole in the shoe, it's like, I'm going back with my receipt. Whereas this is a bit of a different uh, situation. And if you're spending money, it's, the more research, the more time you spend is worthwhile. And all of these grading companies are very upfront about, again, these are humans grading these cards. And if you know about humans, to your point, guy gets a raise, guy gets a divorce. He's looking at a card two different ways or gal for that matter. Um, we've talked a lot about 60, 40, 55, 55, 55, 45, when we had the clay conversation on. Again, there's the the amount of work you want to put in to do your research, get educated, will always give you an advantage. Now, I don't know. I can't sit here and say, and, and I haven't gone as deep in terms of like looking at the optics of this card or why 
and and I haven't held it or, or looked at it. Um, but yeah, I would say four people can look at one card and say it is or is not what it is. Now, to me, just the understanding of that alone can help you get ahead in this game because again, buying and selling, you know this when you go to a, a, a trade show or a card show, like so much of how you interact with an individual can change 15, 20% on your sale price or not even making the sale in general. And so I just go back to that of like, just because something is a PSA 10, just because something is a Beckett 9.5. And now there's definitely energy picking up around cracking. I've seen more than ever over the last two, three weeks of people are like, oh, I'm gonna buy and crack and regrade with a different company. So like opportunities, they exist everywhere. And within the fact that these are cards graded by humans and humans are deeply flawed, lies opportunity if you're willing to put in the research and the work that is my takeaway from sgc 10 jordan sells at record price they're beating their chest over the price sale not over the cart the the value of the actual grade they're beating their chest because it looks better in their case when to me don't you want it to be the most mint not the best looking so i just think again if you're willing to put in work Within grading lies a lot of white space, lies a lot, lot of opportunity. And with the amount of demand and awareness coming into the hobby right now, I believe all three of the grading companies have to be on notice. Otherwise, they need to be innovating because someone's going to come along and build the, the AI, you know, computer recognition version. And the whole thing's going to be rewritten. And then th cool that you sold it for 420. But guess what? When it turns up as a 42 on the AI scale and a PSA 8 turns up as a 47, you got issues. <laughs> well, that's, that, that, that's my takeaway from that that whole conversation. Um, <clears throat> I had a similar takeaway as well. I mean, you know, we t like you guys were saying, we talk about the grades all the time and they are flawed. I will say, I, I know we tried to, we, we were trying to take it to a little bit of a different spot with the more modern stuff, but when you're looking at a car that sells for four hundred and twenty thousand dollars, and you're giving it a one of one pristine label, uh, you're in a, you're playing in a different ball game. So I think there's a little bit less of a I'm willing to give less of a leeway to the grade. Uh, so I would say that card, if it was going to go somewhere else, might get a, a little bit of a lower grade for sure. But um, yeah, like I th I think it's interesting. I think more people are now aware. It was a pretty big story, right? Like I saw it, I saw it in a lot of different places. So that's a that's a net positive. Um, and yeah, it's education. It's like, listen, you're gonna go on eBay, you're gonna look at a card, and you're gonna say that's a ten, cool. But the Prism logo looks like it's a little bit down. You can kind of see the outline. That's interesting. I don't know if that's really a ten. Like I, these are all good things, and it's it's educational for people. So uh, in that way, I was excited about it. We had a buddy that picked up a Jordan PSA eight. That mm -hmm. that when they received it seemed like it was a little faded and a couple different people gave their inputs on it. And some were like, Hey, yeah, if you go to regrade that, that's not catching the eight that was left out in the sun a little bit that. So again, when you're making these purchases, it's always better to do more and more research. It just, just because something says what it is again, eBay, the dynamics of people wanting to sell, how it's not just a clean market in terms of the description and all that, especially on eBay or off eBay. StockX does a good job of like Michael Porter Jr. 10 is you don't get to see or change the title or anything like that. I like that about StockX, but um, yeah, don't just because something says on the face of what it is, discount any other possibilities. Yeah. And, and, Todd, I think you bring up a good point about the lighting and like w where we go with don't buy the grade, buy the card, right? Like if I get a Michael Jordan and LeBron James dual autograph and we graded it a nine, five, 10, it looks great. And then I put it on my, you know, on a display in my office for five years, right next to the window in five years from now, the autographs are half gone. You're not going to buy that card at a nine, five, 10 value. Cause you know, it's not a 10 autograph. That's big, right? People want a nice bold signature. If I keep it by the window and the bold signature goes away, it's not worth that much money. And uh, yep. and, I, I, and I'm going to jump in real quick. And if someone lists that card on eBay 
And in the description, which is not the first thing that shows on an eBay listing, in the description writes, lightly faded autographs due to time and sun over the last five years. And the person doesn't ever look at the description and buys it at the value that the other one, which didn't sat in a cold safe somewhere, whose fault is it? Is it the seller or the buyer? And it's a buyer's fault 100% of the time. <laughs> now, I think this is uh, another... Uh, this leads into another conversation because I, I sent this to you guys on Instagram, but there was an Instagram user. The name was JK cards nine, I believe Yep. who took a Tyler hero prism rookie card and sent the same rookie card, at least from what, you know, we're taking that at face value, sent the same rookie card to SGC, to PSA and to BGS, the same card apparently. And SGC gave it a 10 BGS gave it an eight and PSA gave it a six. And this speaks so much to what we talked about, about do not buy the grade, buy the card, right? Cause you know, any other day of the week, it could have been, uh, you know, BGS giving it a six and PSA giving it an eight. I mean, I, I, I would say most of us probably wouldn't expect that, but um, I just think this speaks to speaks to that point where, you just never know, and all three companies look at different things differently. So that's just really important in in this in this where you you look over the card and you like Tyler said, there's discrepancies in them. Uh, find a card you like and and buy that rather than a card that has a, a number grade attached to it by someone that could have had a good day or a bad day. You just don't know. Yeah, yeah. I also I saw somebody when we were talking about that, you know, last time, someone said like, yeah, like in the in the PSA website, it says like it's QA checked by a few people, and it's like cool like awesome i don't know what exactly yeah. that means that's what they're saying cool yeah and to the point of like the jk card nine guy i there's i take that and say don't take that specific example because there's been 40 other instagram posts that say sgc gave it a four and psa gave it a 10 and bgs gave it an eight i just think yeah. it goes to, you know what i mean it just goes to show that there is discrepancy this is done by humans and also, don't completely throw out what a PSA 10 means, but these are indicators. No different than understanding whether a seller has a thousand positive reviews or one on eBay. You know, like th that's again an indicator. Or when you have an auction going up and all of a sudden you got these random eBay accounts coming in and then you're like, why wow, they canceled the thing? It's like, well, it makes sense. Like the indicators, right? All data to help you inform purchasing decisions. Yeah. But I mean, the indicators definitely are there for like a reason, right? Like a thousand eBay feedback is a thousand for a reason. Whereas one isn't, you know, quite, yeah. I mean, it won't get there, but what, uh, let's just not discredit PSA. I mean, I, I think most of us would agree that if we're sending your cards in at the moment, it's going to be PSA. So a PSA 10 typically is, is going to, is going to uh, have more weight than most. Um, but yeah, I just, I think it, some things can be, uh, double checked when, when purchasing that they may have flaws or they, you know, maybe undergraded, right. It, it works both ways, but, mm -hmm. um, yep. Hear you. But let's, uh, let's get to the next conversation. Um, it's going to be, I want to get into, I know Ty brought it up with Mbappe stuff starting to decrease a little bit in value. Uh, PSA 10s got north of 10 grand for silvers from Prism World Cup. Uh, those have fallen a little bit. Uh, Luca stuff seems to be down 20% or so. Uh, Zion stuff is, you know, not what it once was. But here we are, two weeks away from the start of football, and the attention is going to shift that way, right? There will still be attention on the NFL or the NBA as the season wraps up, but. We've kind of hit on this before where being relevant will matter in cards. Yep. Luca not putting up a triple double is going to, you know, keep his cards from rising. Whereas Mahomes throwing a behind the back touchdown pass to Tyree Kill in a practice and that going viral on Twitter is going to matter. Relevant players on social media have it, that impacts their card values. So I wanted to, to get into that here as we've seen cards fall. And we're going to see cards rise in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's like very situational, right? Like I, I was pretty surprised, not super surprised, but I was fairly surprised. Like when Luca had that big pop off game, I expected just based on how things have been moving, I expected that card to go well over two grand. Like I just did. And 
it went up a little bit. It got up, it, it touched 2000 for a second and then it went back down back to 19, 18 ish. And uh, I thought that was a good example of how it's more situational than we think it is. Like just cause there's a viral moment and where the Kings are saying when there's a viral moment, something goes crazy, blah, blah, blah. blah. Absolutely. But when you're down three, two in the series, even if you had that triple double to make it three, two, like you have a game winner, triple double three, two people are still like, Oh wait, they're going to lose a series. I'm not buying this card right now. You know what I mean? And that affects how that price goes as opposed to the Mahomes where it's like, oh, this is just a practice clip. Like, this is cool. Boom. You know? So I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah. I, uh, it's again, why do people purchase things? And like, if you look across stock investing or real estate investors, you know, emotions play a major part in it. Right. Well, um, Apple comes out with a new iPhone, like boom, invest in Apple or what have you. Good. It's no different. Why you make a great ad for something. People want to go out and buy it. You tap into their emotions. Luca goes insane against the Clippers off a broken foot, like long second longest, you know, game winning three point shot ever. Boom. And then all of a sudden, you know, he's out and we still got three. We still got like six weeks of basketball left to go to the finals and he's not involved. He's not going to play basketball again until January. And guess what? People are going to be forgetting how sick one that game was or how sick his second season was. And because of that, there's going to be less attention on and meaning less people are going to be buying it. But if you've been around the game and that's not to say I've been through four, five, six cycles of this, Ryan, I'd like for you to speak on it. Very much so. And again, you have the best because you have humans walking into your store of like fall starts coming around, football products start coming out, everyone turns to football. You know, two weeks ago, people weren't talking about football. Now you're going to start to see that. And this year is crazier than ever. What happened with Corona, we talked about a lot in our early episodes of like the whole schedule shifted. Premier League's back in two and a half weeks. So I don't know what's going to happen with with Mbappe and uh, that, but Champions League's not going on right now, and they lost. The price has dropped. Population's increasing a bit. Um, but it's going to be very fun to see football. Like, we haven't talked much football. I think also awareness, um, you know, hobby rules. And now I'm going on a little bit of a tangent. But what I'm really excited about is, like, wide receivers. Wide receivers cards, I think, are going to have more juice and more attention and more awareness. So, mm-hmm. Rye, I'd love for you. Yeah. <laughs> are That's you? Uh, was that a stump the shot? I, or was I, that I wonder, who, a, I wonder I who was early on that one. <laughs> I was going to say, that, Ty, that wasn't the conversation you were having a couple of weeks ago. When oh, like, no, I'm yeah. Sure, I'm not sure we're buying, you know, Michael Thomas. Yeah, no, I uh, football in general haven't Literally, done much at all. But what I was going <laughs> to say to you, Rye, is talk me through like a two-year um, stretch in the shop of understanding the cyclical windows of attention and demand for cards. Yeah. The, the, I was going to hit on this when you were, you brought it up, but like typically off seasons are opportunities to buy. That is when the players are the least relevant, right? You get eliminated from a postseason, or you're, you're eliminated from postseason contention like Zion, your stuff falls pretty quickly. Right. And we talked about this last week with Zion, right? PSA 10s go from, you know, 700 to 550. You bought in at 680 thinking they're going to go to eight. Can you stomach that loss? Can you sell it for 550, put the money back into play, reinvest and flip the money? Or are you just, you're going to wait? But typically the off season leads to opportunities to buy, right? That's a good time to stock up on the guys. We saw what Luca did. I mean, youngest debut playoff season or uh, most points in a, like debut ever like 41 um was like assistant a rebound away from a triple double in his last game like i mean dude is a superstar like top five player in the league he's going to be good if you if lucas stuff starts to fall people that have the you know the capital will start to buy that stuff he's gonna be really really good just because he's not playing doesn't mean he won't be good um, but it will lead to opportunities. Some of the younger guys that got minutes, like maybe Karis LeVert, who started to spike, um, whoever loses on the Jazz or the Nuggets, you know, we're recording this early. So if Mitchell loses, his stuff will, you know, might have an opportunity. Jamal Murray might have an opportunity if they lose or MPJ. I know Ty's big on him. Uh, you um, know, I'll say something real quick and just to talk sports for one second. One, that series has been so epic and so fun to watch. It's so crazy how they're going back and forth. Like those two guys are just, 
so it's good bananas. right now. <laughs> like, yeah. Out of control. And then two, like, look, I have loved Michael Porter Jr. Wait I a second here, Ryan. Like, I'm Ryan? this guy. <laughs> But my man's got to learn how to play some defense. I, I, I can't play defense. <laughs> He's a disaster. Rob, what is going on? I don't get it. I don't get it. And I'm upset about it. So let's keep going. I just had to get. I just had to put it out there. I'm I thought we might. Have, I thought we were going to do a 180 a little bit on on MPJ. No, because he's still young. Still his rookie year. It takes some time. But <laughs> looks lost out there. Looks lost out there. <laughs> Um, I just don't think he's used to playing for like eight weeks in a row. <laughs> Michael mean, Porter Jr. hasn't played for eight weeks in a row since he was in high school. You're not wrong. I but, mean, he's not used to it. He's just like, yeah, hey, man, I exactly. got the first six weeks. We're usually out at this point injured. Yep. What do we do from here? Look, it's only up from there. Jamal Murray's been in the league how long? And finally, Weird. yeah, and finally he's getting a little yeah. love. Yeah. But a co- one thing I wanted to touch on um, is with the weird schedule. And like, if you start, if you talk about alt alt sports or single person sports, you know, as people on Twitter have asked about tennis or uh, golf, right? The Masters is in November. Tiger is still the defending champ of the Masters. Uh, the U.S. Open is about to kick off right now. Nadal's not playing in it, so which might lead to a weird draw, which might lead to a first time winner. You know, Coco Golf on the women's side. Um, the and what we were just talking about, like the attention again, like this is consumer attention is at the core of so the supply and demand and how that works. And supply and demand is just the core functionality of the pricing, the market, everything. Um, if you're if you're able to think out far enough of certain events that may happen, it's just when you see the 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 pricing either compressing or or stretching out um keep in mind mike tyson right here he's got a fight coming up september 12th i believe in two weeks i imagine the three four days leading up to it same deal michael jordan uh you know jordan thing on uh was it whether it's espn or what have you what's the next thing is it a magic documentary all those things again attention and that was what we're talking about luca drops 20 percent. people are freaking out acting like no one's ever going to buy a luca card again you know, be patient, be patient. But I think another interesting point of this conversation is, you know, it's not just the sports guys that have like the relevancy, like, you know, Mahomes with the behind the back going viral on Twitter. It's also, you know, what if, I mean, look at some of the, like, what if Bronny James came out and posted a picture of, you know, his Pokemon. We've talked about Justin Bieber and Pokemon, right? There are other ways for things to become relevant outside of, Luca putting up a triple double, Mahomes putting a behind the back pass, Kale McCarr for the Avalanche having an amazing goal, and Bappe looking great. Like there are other ways for cards to be relevant. Look at Steve Aoki, like post that you know mm-hmm. he's going, he's going to have this live stream, and people start buying his tops cards. Mm-hmm. Uh, his uh, first pitch, like that, starts to sell because he's getting into cards. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a there's kind of an interesting yeah. we were just before we came on we were talking about castro big fifa streamer was open up packs on chasing holland on stream and so again same thing if you are putting in the work meaning actually coming up with your own theses actually trying to gut check them actually trying to understand different things that are happening and then striking first before the information might become widespread versus just saying what's he buying i'm gonna buy that What's this person buying? I'm going to buy that. Blah, blah, blah. Be willing to put in the work. If you're listening to this episode, if you're listening to this podcast, and I'm one thing we can employ you is try to give you the tools to do your own research, you know? Mm-hmm. And along the way, maybe, you know, talk about Michael Porter Jr. here and there. So, yeah, interesting next couple of weeks for sure. As basketball starts to fizzle out, we get a champion. One team is going to win. What does that do to? Giannis, LeBron, Tatum, LA, you know, the Clippers, Kawhi, who wins? Um, and Does then, Messi go to the Premier League? Man City. And then football Wait, starting. Can I ask a question? Can I yeah. ask a side question? Let's get into the sports real quick on Messi. If he goes to Man City, does he then play for NYCFC? Is that how that works? That's what they were saying. No, like officially? 
like if he did he probably would right yeah that's like what they're trying to like bake into his deal supposedly is that three three years at uh man city and then two years at uh nycfc which would be super lit that's cool cool so let's uh let's move on to now to mailbag let's get into some of the questions for this week i know ty's gonna pull them up but while he's doing that again if you ever want to submit questions to us please feel free to reach out to us on Twitter or Instagram. It's card talk pod, or you can shoot us an email. The email is card talk pod at gmail.com. So Ty, why don't you, uh, why don't you kick off a question here and let's, uh, let's get into it. Yep. Should I pull this up? I'll pull it up so we can give love to whoever shouted him out on Twitter a little bit here. Um, investing in raw versus graded opportunities and dangers asked by Martin. Uh, you, uh, Uboid, Uboid, Martin Uboid. Um, I would say investing in raw versus graded opportunities and dangers. Opportunity in both. I think that if you are dangers in both too. Very much, very much so. Um, I would say in the the from the fundamentals of investing, higher risk higher reward lower risk lower reward more diversification less growth more stability it's unified all your eggs in one basket higher potential for growth higher potential for loss that's how i would open up that question in raw versus graded because in raw one again how are you buying them ebay just pictures are you going to a meeting up with someone if it's more modern, modern prism stuff, you know, I think you're going to have, again, higher upside because someone's selling. And then if you go in and, and you get the 10, you know, there's a big like, oh, I got my grades back. How they do higher upside on that, I would say, in terms of getting t- margins, $20 can turn into plus $10, $20 grading fee, depends how you're grading, can lead to 125 overnight just from getting the grade. But at the same time, that same card that you buy for 20 can be a 10 or it can be a PSA 7. And a PSA 7 might sell less for less than it raw. So again, high risk, high reward. I think the big thing, we've hit on this point on this show before. This I think it was Lou and I did this during Q&A. But like, if your strategy is to go on eBay and buy cards you can grade, that's not a wise strategy. Right, like it's safe to assume that all raw cards on eBay are not tens. Like, if you want a ten, typically your best bet is to buy a ten. Or, we, like we talked about earlier in the show, if you buy the grade and you've got a nine that you think looks really good, maybe buy it, crack it, and then try to regrade it. Right, but and this is why shows and shops and in-person dealing can be so beneficial and has an advantage over the online is you can see that card in person and get a better idea of if that card will grade. You can't see that through a picture on a scanner Mm -hmm. as well as you can with your eyes and in such in person. Mm -hmm. And I think to the point of, because there is a part of me in my head, the first time I ever bought a card raw on eBay and graded it, I got a 10. (laughs) <laughs> so I do, I, I do Beginner's think, luck. Uh, fair, fair. But to the point of like higher risk can sure. lead to a reward. And that's, that's what I would say. Like there, there can be an opportunity there, but very high risk. Likely not. If, if your plan to your point is to get a 10 likely won't happen, but could now let's go over to grading opportunities and dangers of grading. Uh, dangers is you buy a uh, you buy a Kristaps Porzingis rookie prism PSA ten because he had a they were they tied it up two two. My man now is on two big knee surgeries and like twenty four months from now might be out of the league really struggling. I got really a, struggling I got a better one for you. Lou Bring will it. appreciate this. Or you buy an MPJ Prism 10 when he blows up because your co-host thinks he's going to be a star. Uh, and you buy it at 400. Very... You buy it at 400. Hmm. 
<laughs> and then they fall to 290. That right. does sound like something that might happen. Right? Like that, I wish I had it right here to hold it up, but but even tie with <laughs> <laughs> even tie with like you say buying graded, right? Like I think first the other- off. Oh, God. First off, no, let Ryan talk. <laughs> These were exhibition games that you were buying them off. No, this was like two weeks ago, my guy. Yeah, when he was playing exhibition games. No, I'm talking like first round. Two weeks ago, first round was on. Sounds like Ryan made a bad decision. I agree. I Good got talk. poor advice. That's Look, also true. It's a long term. Like, first off, he hasn't had a good playoff game. So you bought it before the playoffs. I know it to be true. No, absolutely not. Bad job by you. Keep going. I know it to be true. <laughs> okay, so Ty, you talk about grading, and I, kind of the other art, like the same thought process on that is buying a card raw to send a grade, right? Like you could have bought Kristaps Porzingis rookies raw, even at, if they are tens, you know, and paid a premium for them and sent them off to be graded, and you could have sent them off. While he's, you know, he, you know, before he tore his knee or tore his meniscus, and then during that, they, you know, they go down. So there's also, you know, a a, a, a risk in buying cards raw to grade, right? Like I sent in some Mbappe's. We talked about that. Mm-hmm. Mbappe's raw in, you know, uh, April were not nearly what they are now. But I also sent in Ryan Finley Prism base, and those aren't worth the grading fee. Mm-hmm. So it mm-hmm. works both ways. And I think that's another interesting take there. That is, if you're like, hey, let's, I'm going to go buy cards raw. These cards right here, I got 10 of them. I'm going to say seven or eight of these are going to 10. That's a fair assumption, right? If you really know your stuff, you send them all in, they could really bust, you know, and go down while 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 they're there or, you know, they, they could go up. So a lot of risk too, yeah. and even buying them raw and then sending them in to get graded. And then another point also is if, if you're thinking about like your business and cash flows and tying up all your, like if you're sending 75% of your inventory raw in to get graded at one time and it takes four months to get back, now you're tied up. So yeah. there's there that that's a factor too. Yeah. I also think there's something I, I personally would recommend everyone try it. I think it's a good thing to try. And I say uh-huh. that for two reasons. One is you're going to learn a lot about cards in that time that you buy the card for $27 and you look at it and you're like, all right, cool, I'm going to grade it. $25 more dollars to grade it, $30 more dollars to grade it. You get it back, blah, blah, blah. That's fun. And then also I think when it comes to stuff like cards, what I've learned more and more in the last like week or so or last two weeks or so is people don't really listen to you until they bite the apple mm-hmm. and they got to bite the poison apple and like get burned to know what we're talking about here. So I would highly recommend – I hope everyone gets 10s on every car they ever submit. I highly recommend everyone try it out because it's a fun experience and it's a learning experience. Reps. Yep. Yep. 100%. All right, Tal, let's get to one more question here before we move on to uh, latest launch. There's some sites where we just go to even – That's a good one. uh, Yeah, let's do that. The value one, where you look up cards. Yep. Where to find true values of cards. I'm going to show this right here to give Trevor Ainsworth cleverly named his handle. Ask Trevor. Ask Trevor. Good uh, job, Trevor. Trevor, we appreciate you asking us where to find the true value of cards. There are some sites, but we just go to eBay for value. So, Ryan, I love you. I'm going to walk you through a couple different uh, scenarios. One, you are someone comes into your shop mm-hmm. and uh, you've got an open kind of your case and you've got a sticker on pricing. I'm not sure how you display prices. Um, and I'm Tyler and I walk in and I say, I'm interested in that. Um, Chris Stapps person PSA nine prism. And you say, okay, $75. If you're Tyler, how do I gut check that? So there's a couple things that you're going to want to look at in this situation, right? If especially if you're buying uh, with the intention to resell, uh, but there's two parts of this. One, what what have they sold for on eBay, right? So mm-hmm. you can go to eBay, you can go to sold listings, you can see what they've sold for. Mm-hmm. If you want to see a buy it now sale on eBay, right? I listed for 400 or best offer, and it's sold. eBay doesn't show you what I accepted as an offer. Yeah, you're saying on an offer accepted sale, not a buy it on now. A, yeah, on an offer accepted sale. 
that requires going to, uh, there's lots of different places you can go. The one we've talked about off, uh, off camera here is uh, sales dot one thirty point dot com. So Ty, do you, yep. right there. So, I right here. Here. so Ty, if you care, type in that in. Yep. So I come over here. So you go to sales dot one thirty point dot com. It'll also it also says one thirty point dot com slash sales. I just type in sales dot one thirty point dot com. It will both take you to the same spot. And then it will tell you to hit search. So you just type in Christops or Porzingis uh Prism PSA t- nine and then just hit enter or search. And then it will show you the auctions that have sold and what they sold for, including number of bids. This will load. Right? So it'll show you if there's a bid right there, bids, bids, bids. But here you go. These are buy and nows. So it'll tell you what they got accepted for. So it said one, what's that say, Ty? 150? 180. 180. 180 with a strike through? Yep. And you go through and it actually only sold for? Right here, 130. 130. So that's that's key here. That's a good way to check buy it nows. Um, but the other important top or the other important uh, second part of this in, in this discussion is see what they're up for. Mm-hmm. If Porzingis tears mm-hmm. his knee and the last three have done 200, some tells me the next one's not selling for 200. dollars mm-hmm. So you want to check what they're up for. So what I'll do in this situation is go to eBay, search the card I'm looking for. Buy it now, lowest listed or lowest okay. price. Nice, I like this. And then you scroll down, and it will sh- and then basically you find the first Prism PSA nine. There'll be somebody with keyword spamming like mm-hmm. 2015, 16 Prism unopened pack PSA ten question mark Porzingis question mark Jokic <laughs> question mark, and it's going to be like forty dollars. So you're not going to want you're going to scroll right past that guy, but then you'll eventually find a Kristaps Porzingis, and you'll notice there's probably one up right now for. I had to guess 120, 130. I mean, right in that that range. Where's the what's the cheapest one up? Right here. 153. Yep. Right. So last one did 130. So as those sellers see that or a new seller comes along and says, Hey, last one did 130, let's maybe go for uh, you know, 140. Those prices might might dip. So uh if you see it in my shop at 90, you definitely buy it because it sells for more than ninety dollars. But yep. yeah, for the YouTube viewers. Some little, little information on the left side of the eBay screen there. Just yeah, keeping you updated. A little so and so. So go to YouTube the, if you're listening on audio. Go to YouTube. There's a little hint. YouTube video drops on Friday. By the way, it's car. It's uh on YouTube. It doesn't drop till Friday. So pot uh audio releases Wednesday. But yeah, we yeah. crush YouTube. By the way, so shout out to the YouTube viewership because I love those people. Yep, I agree. So a couple tricks, a couple uh tips for looking up sold listings and in getting a value. So let's get into uh, the latest launch as we wrap up this week's episode. A couple different releases on my end coming out this week, and I know you guys have one to talk about as well. But you got Donruss football coming out this week, likely going to be another one of the first releases with a cheaper rookie card in a pro uniform. right? So if you think about it at this point, if you're into football and you've really collected it, we haven't had a Joe Burrow base rookie card in a Bengals uniform. He's got autographs in gold standard. He's got autographs in certified. He's got autographs in, you know, elite. He's got autographs in a Bengals uniform in those products. But I think this is likely the first product of the year. We see Joe Burrow in a Bengals uniform, likely going to be, you know, CGI. It's going to be graphics um, as he hasn't, you know, worn one yet where Panini would have that. Um, But I think this is likely going to be the first product of the year for that. That will help. Also, as Ty's got on screen here, thanks, Ty. Uh, Marvels. This was a big chase set in Donruss, but it wasn't originally. So it's you know NFL players or NBA players with a comic book type look on the card. Started out as just like a you know a cheap set in, in Donruss and really took off in the NBA. Zion got hot, LeBron got hot, Giannis. It really gained traction. It'll be interesting to see how the football set does with the basketball popularity there. So that's an interesting one. And then third piece about Donruss is Panini is putting rated rookies from Optic preview cards in Donruss. So the Optic Silvers, the Optic Hollows from Optic will have preview versions in Donruss. Those will be chased and those will be sought after. Joe Burrow Refractor in in Optic, you know, a month or two months before it comes out, that will will do well. But what's those have like preview, does it say like preview on it? 
some sets do, right? You know, Panini and in Chronicles Basketball put, you know, traded on the back of, you know, Andrew Wiggins, uh, uh, Warriors card and, and Luca contenders and Chronicles a couple years ago, they did like a preview ticket for contenders optics. So sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. My gut is going to tell me two things. They're either going to one write preview on the back of it or two make it a different variation than what would come out in optic. There's a good chance. They're not going to be the exact same card you would pull in optic two months from now. Yeah, like maybe they'll make the you know how like Don Russ always has no helmets on and like the optic always does. Like maybe it's like a Don Russ hollow. That'd be kind gotcha. of gotcha. Cool. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it'll be curious. It'll be curious to see what what happens there. Um, but those will be uh, popular selling points in that product. Then you're gonna have immaculate collegiate national treasures. Big big release for pro version. Right when immaculate comes out. It's a higher end pro product. The big thing here is it's only college versions of this stuff will do well with college collectors. It will do well now because of the lack of product out. Typically not a, the, not the best long-term investment option. Obviously college stuff doesn't typically do as well with pro stuff in terms of investing. Most college collectors want that, but pro collectors don't. And then stadium club baseball comes out this week, comes out this week. Probably the best photography in any card product is Stadium Club Baseball. The yep. photography tops puts in Stadium Club is amazing. On card autos, typically it's two, typically two on card autos per box. Great set, great photography. Um, so those are the the three releases this week. Stadium Club and Heritage are the best uh, photography of the year for baseball. Ty's pulling up uh, some pictures. Ty, if you keep scrolling, I mean. You'll yep. be able to see oh, we here. also have to get to the. I want to get to the Ben Baller yep. tops chrome. Yeah, I was leaving that to you guys. Yeah, so Ben Baller tops chrome coming out. Ben Baller is doing a collaboration with uh, Tops for their tops chrome baseball product. Uh, I think it's all the way on the top. I don't think it's on the release right calendar. Eight thirty one. Oh, it is there. Nice. There you go. Yeah. Tomorrow. So on Tops.com, they are doing a raffle for these cards to enter to win the raffle, which is very sneakery, big time like sneakers app vibes for me. But uh. Mm-hmm. It's it's got a it's a pretty cool product. I don't think there's any autographs in here. There's there's going to be you know your regular tops chrome. There's a few refractors there that are listing, um, and then the die cuts, which are I think are going to be pretty sought after. Yeah, for sure. So um, yeah. it'll be interesting to see what these go for. I think they're 200 retail, and I would expect the resale on them to be to to be pretty high off the rip. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, and I just want to give a shout out to Ben. I think like the the product. Working with Tops, we know some of the team at Tops. We did some work with them. Uh, I, I'd imagine Jeff was involved with this mm-hmm. uh, in some capacity or other. I, I think off the back of Tops doing Tops 2020, I think Ben, I, I don't know him personally. Uh, I know his team a little bit, has really leaned in and um, you know done some good things in terms of getting ingrained in the hobby, not just slapping this thing on, taking this thing seriously. And then Tops on the other side just has done, I think, really good partnerships. Um, one in terms of the tops 2020 uh around bringing in good artists blending art and card space and then i think the cultural relevancy of ben and and the uh, already big following he had in different hobbies um and and bringing them over i think has done really well uh for everyone involved over the last 12 months so pumped for this product um not everything remember not everything needs to be created just to be bought and sold at a higher price Again, like there is collectible nature. People like, you know, I love when I see someone, what they personally collect. It's just, for me, it's fun because it's like, yeah, that's, people have their guy. People have the, the person that they're into. Um, and uh, and so shout out, shout out Ben and, and Tops for coming together and doing this. It's yep. a pretty neat product. That's all we got for this week, guys. We'll see you next week. Sounds good. Peace.